Why did the economists fail so miserably to predict the credit crunch? Is it because society is just so complex that we can't hope to include all of the relevant causal factors into our model? Or is there some deeper reason making human action in principle unpredictable? If humans are capable of making free decisions, does that mean that we can't or that we shouldn't try to explain what they do in the same way that we explain the movement of, of planetary bodies or the interactions of subatomic particles? These are the sorts of questions that you'll grapple with if you study the philosophy of social sciences. And they're the sorts of questions that working social scientists themselves grapple with in their own work. Why study philosophy of social science at the LSE? Well, I think there are three important reasons. The first is the program here is unique. Uh, like most of the programs at the LSE, you're required to take three different courses and to sit examinations in them and write a dissertation at the end. And what's special about it here is that not only will one of those courses be either in the philosophy of social sciences or if, that's, if you want to specialize in the philosophy of economics, you can do that. But you also have the option of studying one of the social sciences themselves, taking a course, in a course or two small courses in economics, anthropology, sociology, any of the areas which are, any of the social sciences which are covered at the LSE. At the same time, you will have a range of philosophy options to choose from, importantly, including a number of the general topics in the philosophy of social science. So this allows you to, on the one hand, uh, investigate the philosophy of social science in connection with particular social sciences, and on the other hand, to compare and contrast some of the issues that you deal with here with the way in which they arise in other, in other sciences, say in physics or biology. The second important reason is the department. The LSE's department, since its foundation by Sir Karl Popper, um, has been a centre of excellence for the philosophy of science. And in the last 10 to 15 years, it has, begun, it has grown into being perhaps the most important uh, centre for the study of philosophy of social science anywhere in the world. If you come and study philosophy of social sciences here, you'll be taught by the best people in the field. The third reason is the LSE itself. The LSE is, its, is as everyone knows, an important uh, perhaps one of the most important centres for social scientific research in the world. This means that not only when you come to choose options from the various social scientific offerings that you'll be able to choose a great, from a great range of courses that are taught by top people in the fields, but it also means that you'll be in a place that, which is a great centre for social scientific activity. You'll see ideas being debated here, that ideas being debate, debated today that will fashion the society of tomorrow. What will your peers be like? Well, they will be typically people with undergraduate degrees in either philosophy or one of the social sciences, or both. They'll be people, many of whom um, will be looking to do graduate study, again, either in philosophy or one of the social sciences. Or there might be some people looking for a career or are interrupting a career in order to do some foundational thinking, uh, a career in some field like journalis journalism, law, um, politics, uh, which makes great use of social scientific thinking and social scientific methodologies. For either of these, there's no better place to come than the philosophy department of the LSE.